Hi, uh, welcome back. It's Rachel and I'm here for another book talk. Today I'm going to speak of two graphic stories that really mean a lot to me because they have to deal with that idea of home. And as somebody who grew up in one place and now live in another and the family I grew up with, which is my own, um, lives in the other place that I left behind. The idea of home is one that I feel strongly, and I feel that oftentimes it gets lost in discussions of other things. So in one sense, the two books I'm going to talk about, one has to deal with the idea of immigration, of literally picking up and leaving and going to a new country. The other has to deal with just feeling displaced and trying to feel how you can be at home when your family has immigrated, you're, you're an American, you live in, the, in this country, um, yet for whatever circumstances, you maybe don't quite fit in. And I think that oftentimes, for whatever reason, many of us have those kinds of feelings that are represented in these books. We may feel displaced, we may feel like we stand out for whatever reasons, I know that because I'm from California and I first came to Wisconsin, people looked at me like they thought I might be an alien, a little bit strange. Um, and it's always interesting, I think, to examine um, our perceptions of people and where they come from. So I just want to talk a little bit about home and what it means and how sometimes it takes a long time for those of us to feel home right in here and be accepting of who we are, okay? So the very first book that I wanna share with you um, is one that I absolutely adore and I love this author. Um, and it may be one that you are familiar with. American Born Chinese, and it is by Jean Luen Yang. And as you can tell from the top, uh, this has received a lot of accolades. It is the winner of the Michael L. Prince Award, and it was also a finalist for the National Book Award. Um, and one of the things I dearly love just about the author, just to sneak it in, is that he is a teacher. Um, I know that he is devoted uh, not just to being a husband and a father, uh, but that he is now devoting his time to writing um, and doing that now. And I'm sure his students miss him. And so let's talk about American born Chinese. So first of all, I want to show you because I always want to show the style. Okay, the the beautiful illustrations that are in here. Okay, and so um, there are so many different things to see. And in this book especially, one of the things that I want to point out is there are three different stories. And I was once told by another adult that they thought, that is too complicated for young minds. Now listen, I have heard some of you gossip, and I know you can keep three stories going at once, so it is not complicated. But the first story that you're going to start out with is with this young boy that you see on the cover right here. Um, and his name is Jen. And I know I'm saying it wrong, J-I-N, because one of my students um, I taught, that's his name. And people made fun of me, but I have speech impediments, so forgive. And he is Chinese American. Um, he was born in this country. And he goes to a school where the majority of people do not look like him. Um, there is one other girl in his class, and she is Japanese American. And one of the experiences that really sticks with me, and I just want to share it, it doesn't ruin the story for you, but automatically everyone in his class is like, oh, well, you two should be together because you're both, you know, the same. And they're both looking at each other like, well, I'm Chinese American and she's Japanese American. That's not the same. And I think that is one of the things that really locked into place for me um, because I grew up in a community that was very richly diverse in Asian cultures and it's not the same. Um, it's kind of like saying that my family is like my husband's family, 
they're very different. And it's not just because of where we grew up, but everybody has their own different culture, your family culture, right? Um, and, uh, you can ask my stepdad cause he says that my sister and me, we are way too loud and he does not understand that. So this is one of the things that I love about this book is it talks about that even though he, he is here in this country because he is Chinese American and he is not a dominant culture within the school he goes to, he sticks out. How does that make you feel? We have all been in situations where we stick out. Maybe it's because something embarrassing happened. I'm going to tell you one time I went to give a speech and I came out of the bathroom and my little little dress, my, my dress was stuck in my pantyhose. Now that was not a time when I stuck out that I wanted to stick out. Okay. Um, and there are times when people stick out and they don't, they don't feel okay with it. Um, and there are times when we as individuals may make someone else stick out and they're not comfortable. So we get to hear Jen's story. All right. Of how he is sticking out and how this makes him feel about his family, um, about who he is and about his culture. And then we get to hear about the monkey king. Oh, the monkey king. And I showed you a picture of him, right? Oh, the monkey king is fantastic. Here he is, the monkey king. Oh, and the monkey king is taken from uh, actual folklore, okay? And he is fantastic. He knows Kung Fu. Uh, people admire him. He is, he's just, he's, he's awesome, right? But he wants to be recognized as a god. He wants to be seen as something bigger. And yet he's a monkey and the other gods laugh at him. And they don't want him to be a part of who he is. So now we have Jen, right? Who's struggling with his own identity. Now we have the monkey king who is also feeling very dissatisfied because no matter what he does, he is also trapped by expectations of other people. Okay. So you see how these stories connect. Now we have the third story and the third story we have, and this does offend some people and you know what? It should. Okay. So we have Danny. Okay. So here is Danny right here. And now look at this very, very horrendous stereotype, right? Of his cousin and his cousin is visiting and he is so embarrassing and he draws attention to himself and Danny, I, I don't want anything to do with that. I want him far away. And so then we also have this story happening of Danny who just wants, I want to fit in. I want to be cool. And I got this Chinese stereotypical character right here, right? Right here with all of those implications. All of these things connect to let us know what does it mean? Okay. Now I am a white woman, so I cannot speak for Chinese American, but what does it mean when you have all of these things? this feeling of wanting to fit in and finding your home and finding your place, right? Because essentially that's a lot of what this book is about. And it's also about the incredible backlash that a lot of people face because they are different, okay? And I think that that is an important thing to examine um, as we interact with other people in our community. Um, I know I look back often on things that I did when I was a kid and I kind of cringe, I cringe and I own that moment because um, from those moments I grow, all right? But I think we can all recognize those, those moments in our lives when we cringe a little bit because of how someone treated us or how we treated them. And I think American Born Chinese is a very important work to read and to see um, from another person's uh, pers perspective of what it means to feel like you don't belong and how do you find home and trust me you will understand home when you read this book okay Jean Luen Yang a tremendous individual creator author and I highly recommend his other books as well which I will be doing book talks on um, but this is one that I guarantee to read to look at when you're trying to think of home. The next book that I want to talk to you about is also a graphic and um, it's called Illegal. Okay. It's called Illegal. 
and it is written by somebody you might be familiar with, Owen Colfer, uh, who uh, is the author of the Artemis Fowl series. Um, so it's written by Owen Colfer as well as by Andrew Donkin, and it's illustrated by Giovanni Regano. And I do want to show you as well uh, the colors that are used, and it's a very uh, matte palette. Okay, let me see if I can open this up a little bit. I hate bending my books, guys. Um, but I'm going to try to for you, okay? I'm going to try to for you. And um, it's very clean um, on both of these, right? And you notice in American Born Chinese, it's a very vibrant, right? But here we get a very muted palette, but so clean. And the artwork is just beautiful. Uh, Regano, I just, I love, I love what he's created. And you do get a sense, okay, of where they're from. And it is Ghana. Okay, so we are in Africa. And one of the things I appreciate about this book is so often we hear about immigration within here, like from people going up into the United States. But it's important to understand that people make these desperate um, attempts to go to other countries all around the world. And this offers a perspective that I think many of us in the United States don't often listen to or are aware of and so this book who this book I gotta take a breath on okay this book is about two young brothers and when I say young I mean young um this right here this let me get to the right side this is Ebo look how young he is okay um this is Ebo Okay, and Ibo is, he's every kid. He is every single kid, and he lives in a, a, a very poor village. He lives in a very poor village with his brother and with an uncle that is an alcoholic, does not care. Um, their parents are dead, and it is not a safe place. And he wakes up one morning. I need to keep showing this. Sorry. I'm so caught up in the story. And he wakes up one morning and his brother is gone. It's important to understand that before his brother left, their sister left to illegally immigrate to another country to start a better life for them because they starve. They don't have enough food. Um, they don't have anyone that cares for them. Like I said, they have this uncle, but really? Mm. Okay. Um, perhaps you yourself have experienced this or you know somebody else who has experienced this. Uh, you may be in a place where there are adult caretakers who you can take the word care out. Um, they're just takers. And this is the case with the adult in their life. And the children must scramble on their own. And so when the sister feels old enough, she takes chances and says, when I have enough money, I will, I will send for you. But it has been a long time. They don't know if she made it. Um, and that is the case for many others who try to get out. And so Ibo's um, older brother, okay, his name is Kwame, um, says has left. And he did not tell Ibo because he didn't want to take his younger brother with him. And he does the same thing. I have left. <laughs> Right. I have left. I'm going to try and, and make and get money and then I will send for you. Imagine being evil. They've all disappeared one by one. And now I am left with a drunk uncle. Right. And he's like, no, no, like take me with you. So he gets on the bus. Yeah, he gets on the bus He gets on the bus and he goes. So this is the story of two very, very young brothers who scrimp and save um, as they cross deserts. I mean, and, and the story is told uh, in flashbacks, okay? Um, so you get a little bit of where they are now, which I, I think really engages the reader. So you get a little bit where they are now, okay, here on the, on the ocean. And you get a little bit of the sacrifices, the journey to get to the coast, um, but they have no money, so they have to work to be able to get where they are. And so you follow their journey. And as you follow this journey, you fall in love with these two boys. They have such hope 
And this is what they're looking for, right? They are looking for their sister. They are looking for family. Remember I told you being displaced, and I'm just in Wisconsin and they're in California, and I feel uh, removed, right? I feel like someone has taken a part of my heart and it's gone. And it is a choice that I made, and I don't regret the choice, right? But it is still a choice that I made. And yet they have nothing left for them in Ghana except death. So they make this this voyage. It is an extremely dangerous, dangerous journey. And I think by, by looking at this and reading this, you understand why there are so many people who undertake such a thing. And regardless of uh, belief of all oh, policies or whatever, um, to me, this is very much a journey about finding your home. And they, they don't have any adults in their life that care for them. It is just them. And to have that kind of courage and that spirit is, is something I don't think I ever had as a kid. Um, because I did have a caretaker. Yeah, someone who cared. Uh, so this to me is an incredibly moving story. Um, and I highly recommend reading it, especially if you don't know much about uh, immigration and, and people over on the other side of the world uh, in Africa and what it is that is happening. And I think that this is very much uh, one that will help people understand the motivations of other people. And again, this is about family too. This is about what are you willing to sacrifice to find your home? Most of the time, this is a question that comes up for, you would think, an adult. Um, But in this case, it is a question that comes up for children. And it's a powerful and moving one. And also, I think it's one that makes you question what is home, right? Um, How do you define home? And I, um, yeah, they're, they're looking for that better life in Europe. And... Um, is that what home is ultimately at the end of the day? And you will read this and you will find out. So I want to show you one more time the two books that I talked about. So first of all, I have American Born Chinese by Jean Luen Yang. And then I also have Illegal by Owen Colfer and Andrew Donkin, illustrated by Giovanni Regano. And I should also give some credit in here for The Colorist. The Color is by Lark Pien. Um, this is available from First Second. This is available from Sourcebooks Jabberwocky. Um, they're excellent reads, both graphic stories about what home means to you. And keep in mind, if you are an individual who is still struggling to find out home, um, if you are a young adult, and sometimes we don't always get choices when we are young, um, remember that you are the person who gets to decide eventually in your life what home means. And perhaps when you read stories about other people and how they define home for themselves, it will help you to recognize what it is you want your own home to be. So until then, I wish you happy reading, and I wish you the best of health. Thank you.